Did you know that of the Ten Commandments God has given us, there is only one that comes with a promise? Honor your mother and father, and you will be given a long life. Honor is the word that Pastor Terry will be teaching us as we continue in our series, Eight Words to Change Your Family. Let's join Terry as he expands on this subject today. Did you know that God has his top ten list too? Did you know that? Who's ever heard of the Ten Commandments? That is God's top ten list. I just want to read to you. It's from in Exodus 20, 1 and 2. And I didn't take all the scriptures up. I just pulled out the parts that we know. And it's this. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Hallelujah. You shall have no other gods before me. Number 10, number 9. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number 8. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped one here. I'm sorry. I, I, my bad. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven images. You not, shall not put up any other thing and worship it. And you shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain. You know, I hear a lot of Christians who do that. And that just grieves God's heart. I, I, I forget who it was I was listening to on the radio. He, he was talking about uh, how he talked to someone. They started taking God's name in vain again and again. Finally, he goes, you know what? Oh, it was Duck Dynasty. It was that the, the dynasty dude. It was one of the guys with the beards. I don't know which one it was. They all look alike to me. But he says, yeah. He says, I finally got tired of it. He says, you know what? That's the only name that's going to save your soul, and you're using it as a curse word. And that guy was shocked by that. And he, this is to a non-Christian. And he says, I, I'm going to tell you about Jesus Christ. And he told him about it. And uh, he says, actually, actually, he called him up to buy something. And then finally he says, you know what? If you want to know about Jesus Christ, come visit me, and I'll talk to you. Click and hung up on the guy. Later on, the guy showed up at his house. You know, and so he brought him in, gave him the gospel of Jesus Christ. The guy gave his heart to Jesus and was saved. Years later, this Duck Dynasty guy or the Duck Commander or whatever he is, he was at this church and he got to speak. And as he was there, they said, hey, let me introduce you to one of our guys uh, who's one of the leaders in our church. So they brought this guy up and it's that very guy that came to his house who's using God's name in vain. But he says, that's wrong. That's wrong. And then that very guy is now one of the pillars in God's church. Amen? Amen. You know that's fine for non-believers, but the thing is, Christians, do not take God's name in vain. We will be held accountable for it. It's one of God's top ten. He's serious about it. Hallelujah. So know that. But that's not the thing we're going to. Uh, the next one is this. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And then the next one is this. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. Right there is our key word, honor. Say it with me. One, two, three. Honor. 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 Honor is the fourth word to change your family. I'm going to repeat it again. Some of you guys may think, and you know, that was good. That was in the Old Testament. Then it was repeated later on in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy. It says this, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. you. Say, all right, that's great. That's good for the Old Testament. But then it's carried on into the New Testament. Paul, by the Spirit of God, was led to repeat the same thing. And he says this, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, and that it may be well with you in the land in which your Lord God has given you. That's how Paul, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. This is a universal command, by the way. This goes out not just to God's people. This is a, this is a command that goes out to the whole world. It doesn't matter what nation you are, what uh, uh, nationality you may be. It doesn't matter how old you may be or how young you may be. It doesn't matter if your parents are here or not. The thing is this, God has called us to honor our parents, and we're going to study that today. This will bring a family back together. This will heal the family. These are the things that will change the family from the things that are so destructive back to life. Amen? If your family feels like it's dead today, I'm telling you, this, this is one of the words that's going to help bring that family back to life, give you hope, and that is honor, honor. Today, so many people are all about honoring themselves that they forget how it is to honor someone else. You know, they, it's all about me, honoring me. You know, that I want what I want. You know, give me what I need. Give me my affection, all that kind of stuff. But we forget that God has called us to honor our parents. Parents are forgot about quite a bit. In Hebrew, the word honor actually means a heavy weight. Like put something on them, something heavy of honoring on them. Now, this isn't don't lay it on real thick. 
This isn't talking about just be flattery with your words. It's talking about think about those things that are good about what your parents do and just bless them with it. Say, this is what you do in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for honoring me. And you honoring them. There's a thing in a book by Dennis Rainey. I want to read, read it to you. It's a tribute and a promise. And it says this. Honoring your parents is an attitude accompanied by actions that says to your parents, you are worthy. You have value. You are the person God sovereignly placed in my life. You may have failed me. You may have hurt me. You may have disappointed me at times, but I'm taking off my judicial robe and releasing you from the courtroom of my mind. I choose to look at you with compassion as a person with needs as a person with concerns and scars of your very own. Boy, I think we've forgotten how to look at our parents that way, haven't we? Many, many times. Now, some of you may be sitting here and say, Pastor Terry, you know, I actually want to just turn you off right now because you have no idea how I was raised up. You have no idea the abuse that I've been through and and the, the things that they've called me. You know what? This isn't Pastor Terry's things. This is God's thing. God says, honor your parents. God says, honor them. And if you've been through that, hang on. God has a word for you, okay? And some of you may be here today saying, you know what? My, my parents are long gone or they're passed away or whatever it may be. Listen to this. And, and not only that, but the thing is, if some of this stuff doesn't apply to you, like if your parents aren't here at the moment, but you can still honor them by the way you live and the way you talk about them throughout the neighborhood and throughout this world that you live. But the thing is, you could teach people how to honor. You know, this world is full of families who are hurting. And when we take this truth in, not only are they for us, but they're so we can take them into the world and give them the principles of life for their family. So learn and take it in so that you may be a teacher. Amen? That's what the church is supposed to be. We're supposed to be salt that goes out into the world, not just salt into our own family, but that goes out into the world and makes a change for God. We forget that parents are people at times, and we grant them, we need to grant them the grace to make mistakes. Amen? They've done it for us many times. So what's the big deal? Why should we honor? What's the big deal? Well, let me tell you this. When children do not honor their parents, the very fabric of society is torn apart. Why is it do you think that the devil attacks the family more than any other unit? He doesn't just attack nations. How he attacks the nations is he attacks the family. And when he could tear apart the family, he could tear apart that nation. Amen? I'm telling you guys the truth. When he can unravel the very fabric of the family, he has unraveled society that operates in wholeness. And he can separate the kids from the, the parents and the parents from the kids. I remember the days when schools, man, you didn't, I'm not going to get off on this old person preaching sort of thing. It's, you know, I am old, I realize. But I'm saying this, you know, give it to them. When our kids, you know, I've, I've, uh, there's some place that I was heard last night where this football team, this coach, he says to all his players, he says, you know what, you guys are all suspended. You guys aren't acting right. You guys are, uh, the way you're cocky and everything about you. I don't know the whole details, but this one, I think it's in Utah or something, I don't know, but he suspended a whole team. Have, has anyone heard about that? Oh, wow. You guys probably know a whole lot more about it than I do. So what happened? What happened? The parent says, we're behind you. Why? Everyone knows that there, there's something in the family that's missing, and it's missing between the children and their parents. My brother and I, we grew up on these chick tracks that mom and dad used to get all, these, all the time. They're little witnessing tracks. They're called chick tracks. And then it, this guy years ago described what the future is going to be like between the parents and the children, and he hit it right on the nail. You know, you've seen kids and parents, even through court systems, saying, I, I want my, what is it when the kid says, I no longer want to be part of the family? What do they call that? Emancipation. Who ever heard of such a thing? Stuff like that. That's what the world's going to. And the devil is attacking the family. We need to fight back. And one of the ways to fight back is through the word of God. And God says, honor your mother and your father. You know, that's why one of the reasons also families are under attack. That's another reason why if you guys pulled in, you might have seen the signs that says, pray 40 days to stop abortion. You know, that's another way to destroy the family. Just destroy the family by numbers. And so this church, number one, I just want to let you know what this church believes and what we, we stand for. One of the four things that we stand for, and if you look back there, it's a little third banner, and it's family and community. God cares so much about the family and community, so do we. And we do everything we can to strengthen that. We do everything we can to make that whole in any way according to God's word, amen? That's how we do it. We don't just do it through social programs, but we do it through the love of Jesus Christ, do it through the love of God, through the word of God, giving the truth, and 
we also use social programs within our church. But family is very much needed and honored, and we need to, we need to honor that here. All children are commanded to honor their parents, even if the parents did a lousy job. <laughs> you may be saying, if you think I'm going to do anything to encourage my old man, you are crazy. You are crazy. But you're honoring your parents does not mean this. Listen, it does not mean groveling and seeking their approval. I got to do everything I can to seek the approval. God says, no, I, I, I released you from that. You do not have to serve man. You have to serve me. And it's not just groveling at their feet just saying that. But God has released us from that so we can serve him. Let me continue. It's also not making yourself vulnerable to their hurtful behaviors. Maybe it may have been hurting you for a long time with their words. You name it. But we don't make ourselves susceptible to that all the time. And it's also not ignoring or denying the past. But here's what honoring the parents is. Honoring your parents does mean choosing to place great value on your relationship with them. Amen? Place great value on that relationship. How do you know? How much time do you spend to them? How much time do you talk to them? That's one of the great things right there. It matters to God. It should matter to us. It also means this. Taking the initiative to improve the relationship. A lot of young people, a lot of adults are waiting for the parents to come to them before they reconcile. God says, no, you get out there and you take the initiative and you do it. Amen? That's, what would we be if God had not taken an initiative towards us? The Bible says that no man seeks after God. So we need to seek after our parents if they won't seek after us. That's one way. The third way is this. And by the way, the only thing that's going to cloud you from doing that is all the pain that's inside of you. We're going to deal with that. The third thing is acknowledging the sacrifice that they made for you. You know your parents made a lot of sacrifices for you? I remember growing up when times were bad. The only way I can remember it, and please don't take this as a political thing, was during the Carter era, okay? And I remember that times were so bad that, you know, they was, dad was selling off all of his guns and his crossbows. But I think he did that mostly so us kids wouldn't shoot each other and play with each other. Because we did. We constantly pulled, it down, pulled them down every time they left. Ooh, look what I got. But no, we had to do that in order to, he sacrificed. Mom and dad sacrificed again and again and again and again for us kids. To the point that we never realized they sacrificed until we were older. They didn't go around saying, I got to feed you kids now. We got to go sell the car. They didn't do that. <laughs> they did it quietly. They sacrificed. They sacrificed. So we need to acknowledge the sacrifices. We need to see them as Jesus does. With compassion and mercy. And not as that one person says, with a judge. We take off that judicial robe. And quit taking them out of the courtroom of our mind. And stop judging them. Let's set them free. Amen. And the next one is this. It means forgiving them as Jesus forgave you. When we honor our parents, it does great things. It, number one, it blesses us. Some of, you, some of you may be thinking, well, we shouldn't be so selfish, Terry. I think you should be. I want to give you something here. The fourth, first four commandments. God says, you will do this because I said so. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. You shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain. And remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Those are what they are. Then he comes to the fifth one. And this is the only one that comes with a promise. And it says this, that your days may be long on the earth. When you honor your father and mother, your days are going to be long on the earth. God put that out there for us to look at and to say, I want to go for that. I want, I want life. I want life for myself. I want life for my family. This is a promise that comes with honoring our, our, our parents. God gave it to us. God goes out of his way. We should go after it. So what is a blessing? Ephesians 6, 2, 3 says this, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise. And this part says this, that it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. What does that mean? Does well mean wealth? Does it mean uh, easier life? Does it mean health? Does it mean safety? I don't know. The Bible's not real specific on that. But you have to think about it. Think about all the times, maybe there's a hard time in your life that when you're obedient to God's word, you've set into motion things that God could bless you. And then later on in your life, it goes well for you. When we honor our parents, we've set things in motion in the spiritual realm that we never see. And then, you know what? It goes well with us when, God, when we apply it to our life. It goes well with us. The second part of that promise is this. And you may live long on the earth. Now that one I can understand. <laughs> that you may live long on the earth. By the way, when we choose not to uh, forgive our parents... When we choose not to honor them, what is that called? Sin. Did you know that when you sin, you automatically choose to suffer? 
How many of you guys have ever heard people say, why does this happen? Why does this happen? And yet they live a life that's ungodly, unholy. You know what? When you choose to sin, you choose to suffer. When we choose to obey God, God does not offer uh, suffering to his promises other than the fact that the world's going to hate you because you follow God. But other than that, he will see you through everything. And all the suffering and pain that we enter in lots of times is because we choose to sin. So don't choose to sin and you won't suffer as much. Amen? I mean, that's just truth. That's just plain common sense right there. So if we want a healthier life, we need to forgive our parents because we realize that forgiveness creates health in here. If you hold bitterness in, it causes sickness. Amen? We've already found out it's true. Science backs it up, says, yeah, it's true. The Bible says it's true. You got to believe it. Remember, if you choose to sin, you choose to suffer. So we need to choose to obey God so we'll have less suffering in our lives. So apply this to you. I can believe, and you may live long on the earth, also is a promise to a legacy. You want your family to live on? You want your family to live on in, in the peace of God and the joy of God and, and the blessings of God? When you start honoring your parents and your f- kids see how, they, how you do that, they will do the same thing. They will honor you. They will honor you someday. But if they see the way you dishonor your parents, they will do the very same thing to you as well, and so will their kids. So it needs to start. You say, well, my parents didn't do it. You know what? Drive a stake in the ground. says it starts here. It starts now with me. That's all about Christianity. You know what? Forget the past. I'm breaking the chains in my life. I'm not waiting for anyone else to break the chains in their lives. God, break this chain and this curse in my life and my family today. And I choose to stand on the grounds and be obedient to your word in honoring my parents. And in doing that, we have staked it out and says, today, I will do what God wants. And then we can receive the blessings from that. And you know what? You could create a legacy for your family. Even if your parents didn't, you do it. Even if your parents did not honor, you do it. You may be thinking, well, my parents don't care if I honor them. They don't give a rip what I say. Wrong. Very wrong. Who's ever thought, you don't have to raise your hands, but who's ever thought in their minds, my parents really don't care what goes on in my life? I want to give you a story. Who's ever heard the story of David and Absalom? David was a king, and he had many sons, and one of his sons was Absalom. He is the guy who had the really long, beautiful, thick hair and everything about him. Well, Absalom had other brothers, stepbrothers. And at one time, uh, Absalom also has a sister named Tamar, very beautiful girl. Well, one of Absalom's stepbrothers raped Tamar. Absalom became so angry. And David didn't do anything. Bad dad. What happened? Absalom took revenge. He went and killed his stepbrother, hunted him down. He did a plan, brought him in, snuck him in, and he had his servants kill him right there on the spot. Well, David was so angry. His dad was so angry. What did he do? He got very angry. <laughs> Absalom was feared for his life. So he took off and he ran for another country. Uh, Gersher, Gersher, whatever it is. Gergen, I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, he ran away. He ran away. And as he was there, he was there for three years fearing for his life. And guess what? Listen to this. What does the Bible say? During that whole time, it says, the heart of King David longed to go out to his son Absalom. You may feel like my parents don't give a rip what I think about them. You're wrong. David showed it right here. His own son ran for his life, but yet, even though David was angry, he longed for his son. Can I tell you right now, you may not believe this, and you need to hear this. It's the truth from God, because the devil will do everything he can to blind you and to think otherwise. Your parents long to be with you. Your parents long to hear from you. Your parents long to see you. Your parents long for you. You need to hear that. Even if they're ungodly, They long for you. You may think, you don't know. I'm telling you right now, you don't know. David was wanting to be with him, but he was also so very angry. David finally called for his son to come to him after three years. And so what happens? You think there'd be a great party? You think everyone would be rejoicing? Nah. What happened? Uh, Absalom could not be in his father's presence. And for two years, he never saw his father. He came back home to Jerusalem, but for two years, he never saw his father. I'm telling you what, that caused bitterness. That caused hurt in his heart. I guarantee it. It says this, And Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, but did not see his king's face. And it goes on. And this is what Absalom says. Why have I come from Jershur? It would be better for me to be there still. Why did I even come home? What's the point? I thought dad wanted to be with me. He doesn't. Do you see the mixed emotions? First of all, we see David so angry, so angry, but yet he longed for his son. Now his son's home. So what does his dad do? He just refuses him. He says, no, you just stay away from me for right now. I'm I'm still angry. 
but yet he still longed for him. And, and guess what? The son longs for him too. Just as in every person in our lives, we long for our parents' blessings. We found that out last week. Amen? We long for our parents' blessings. And so did Absalom right here. And so he was getting these mixed messages that was sent throughout the whole family. And finally, King David allows Absalom to see him after five years. And it says this. And King David, and he came to the king, Absalom came to the king, and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. Then the king kissed Absalom. He took him in. He took him in. Now you think everything's going to be great, but it's not. You know, through all that hurt and through all these things that happens in people's lives, unless it's dealt with and surrendered to God, it never heals. It may look like, hey, things are back to normal the way they should be, but until you've given it to God, the devil still has a certain foothold in our lives, that hurt, that bitterness, that anger. Here's what happens. In 2 Samuel 15, Absalom went out and he started stirring up trouble. How did he do it? Well, see, back then the people, they would come to the king. They would come to the king and to the gate and um, up to the king and they would present their case before the king like a court. And he would judge and he would say, all right, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. And people would do that all the time. So what did Absalom do? He was bitter towards his dad. So he stayed at the front of the gate and he, he thought, I'm going to take over this kingdom. So anyone that came to him, he says, let me talk to you. Well, what is your problem? Give it to me. Father's really busy. The king's real busy. Tell me your issue. So they said, okay, here's my issue. And so he resolved it for them. And he became very favorable amongst everyone. They loved him. They said, man, this, this guy's great. He was stealing the kingdom of God away from his um, uh, kingdom from his father. And here's what it says. In this manner, Absalom acted towards all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. They said, we like you. And he's, now he's going to use that to take over the kingdom. It says this. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom continually increased by the numbers. So Absalom's rejection for five years was with so much anger inside of his heart that he was so angry at his dad for all that thing that happened to him that all of a sudden he took over the kingdom. And when he did, what happened? King David and all his army, they fled. They left the city. They just left. And they gave it over to Absalom. He took over from it. Well, as King David is marching away with all of his army, his men started thinking about it and all that stuff. They said, you know what? We'll go back and we'll take it for you, king. We'll go back and do it. He goes, okay, all right, go up back. But, but, but don't hurt my son Absalom. Oh, we're not going to hurt him. We're going to kill him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't hurt my son Absalom. Don't hurt my son Absalom. And so what happens? They went back. They fought. They killed Absalom. Absalom got killed. When the news came back to the father, King David, what did King David, this first thing King David wanted to know, how did the battle go? He didn't want to know how it went. He wanted to know, how's my son? How's my son? Well, finally, when the second guy came up and told him what happened, he says, your son is dead. What did King David do? It says this. So David went up to the ascent of the Mount of Olives, and he wept as he went. And he had his head covered, and he went barefooted. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up weeping as they went also. But once, once they found out that Absalom was dead, here's what happened. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gates and wept. And, his, and as he went, he said this, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Oh, my son Absalom, oh, my, Abs my son Absalom, oh, my son. And it just goes on and on. This guy is weeping. He's bitter, probably over the things that he should have done and he wished he could have done and wished he could have taken back. Hey, I may be talking to some parents today, today also. There may be something that happens between you and your kids and you feel like, you know, don't wait till they're grown and out of the house and wishing that I've done it different. That is a bitter, bitter thing that eats away at you and the devil will use it. Make it right. Make it right. Forgiveness. But here's what happens. When the army heard David crying, they came back in. When they heard him, they thought, we fought for you. Men died. We fought to get your kingdom back. But then all of a sudden, they heard him crying like that. The Bible says that they hung their head in shame, and they kind of crept back into the, the house, into the kingdom. I'm sorry, into the house, into Jerusalem. They, just, they were ashamed. They felt sad. They're like, ah. Oh. And you know what? One of, Absalom's, uh, one of King David's uh, mighty men, he says, you know what? If you don't get out there and change your ways, you are going to lose this kingdom. Here's what he says. You seem to love those who hate you, and you hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that your commanders and troops mean nothing to you. It seems that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died, you would be pleased. So finally, King David came to his senses, and he, he went out, refreshed himself, and he went out, and then they all rejoiced that he got his kingdom back. The whole point, what's the point of all this, Pastor Terry? The point is this. The bond between a father and a son 
the bond between a mother and her daughter and, just, and all the kids, it is so strong it cannot be broken. There's a bond there that God has placed in our lives. And I want you to know, you may not think they're thinking about you, they are thinking about you. Just as you're thinking about them. They're thinking about you. That bond can't be broken. Hallelujah. You may say, well, you don't know my parents. My parents never think about me. You're wrong. They are thinking about you. Your relationship may be like David and Absalom's. It would be a mixture of love and, and frustration and bitterness. But it can be healed if we give it to God. Praise God. <laughs> if that cycle is to be broken, it has to go through us first. I challenge you as Christians to step up to the bat. Parents, don't wait for your kids to come begging for your forgiveness. Go to them. Go to them. Teach them. If you, listen, if you wait, you're teaching them to hold out and not seek forgiveness. You go to them and teach them what forgiveness is like, and they will do the same thing when they get older. Amen? That's life right there. Even if the signals your parents are giving you are saying, stay away, I don't, I don't want your honor, don't believe it. Can I tell you this? I want to give you something here. There is in the heart of every parent a longing to be honored and recognized for the love that has been given to you. There's, just as there's in the heart of every kid to be blessed by their kids, to be touched and to be loved, I want your blessing, I want your approval. Amen? Parents do the same thing to their kids. Parents are seeking recognition. They're seeking honor from their kids saying, I appreciate what you've done for me, mom and dad. They're seeking that. Isn't that amazing? It goes back and forth. You think parents are too grown up. No, think in your heart. You, when your kids say, I, I love you, and I appreciate what you've done for me, what that does to you. Hallelujah. There's a, someone, her name is Emma Bombeck. She wrote this. Children never seem to figure out that their parents have ex expectations. They need something in return for their love, parents do. We are so slow to figure out that our parents are vulnerable human beings who can also be hurt. Your parents are. I don't care how tough, how stiff neck, or how mean they are. They're very vulnerable, just like children are. And they need their kids. They need their kids accepting for what they've done and approval of that. They need their kids' honor. God created us that way. Deep within every parent's heart, whatever they know it or not, they don't know how to explain it, is to hear from their kids, to tell them, you did love me. You did sacrifice for me. I'm thankful for what you've done in my life. You know, I, I may have thought she was crazy and bizarre, but you know what? I was wrong, and you were right. I was wrong, and you were right. Parents need to hear that from you. I don't care how old they are or how old you are. They need to hear that. So it's time to honor your parents. How do we do that? I'm going to give you three steps. God wants us to honor them even if you don't feel like it. Amen? Let's read that. One, two, three. Even if you don't feel like it. God wants us to honor them. We don't wait till we do things how we feel. Think of it this way. What if you guys, how many of you guys ever got up and did not feel like going to work? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you went to work anyway. Why? Because you're adults. You guys are mature. You don't think like children and you don't act like children. Hallelujah. How many of you guys never, there's times you don't feel like reading your Bible, but you go ahead and read your Bible. Why? Because you know that's what you're supposed to do and that's what you need to do and it's for your life. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We need to honor our parents, even whether we feel like it or not. Our feelings are not a th thermometer of what is truth out there. Can I tell you that right now? I'm going through that with some young people right now. Do not let your feelings be the thermometer of what is true. Your feelings will lie to you, and the devil will use your feelings against you. That is the truth. Emotions will lie to you. They will lie to you, and the devil can use them in many ways. Hallelujah. So... Part of it is becoming an adult. We need to do those things. Maybe you feel angry and hurt, neglected, or misunderstood. Adult, it's time to get past that. Just stop it. Stop thinking all those things. Your kids will soon grow up and handle you the same way that you handle your parents. <gasps> if that's not a slap of reality right there, I don't know what is. Your kids are going to handle you the way you handle your parents. Hallelujah. And when we deprioritize our parents through our lives, it, saying that it's, you're not important to us, we don't communicate with them, that's the same thing we're communicating to our kids. There's a letter here. I, I want to make sure I read it. I probably lost it already. Oh, here it is. I thought it was good. That's coming after this next point. And first, this scripture is this, 1 Timothy 5.8. But those who can't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. I want to read you a letter, and I hope this is not like you. Don't wait till you feel like it. 
Listen to this. This is a woman who wrote to, uh, uh, I can't think of the name of the gentleman who with this series here, uh, James McDonald. But anyway, this is a letter that wrote, it says, when my husband died 10 years ago, that was a shock. But even greater shock has been the reaction of our four grown children. There was no hope of getting my husband back, but I was hoping at least to have a good relationship with my children. I don't require that much from my daughters and sons, just a bit of communication, just a phone call. But I could go for six weeks at a time and never hear from a member of my family. Four grandchildren, I'm sorry, four children, eight grandchildren, and not a phone call. I notice that when they do call, it's always for some reason. It's never, mother, are you all right? You see, I have Parkinson's disease and I am a diabetic. It's not that, I, that they don't know that I'm under a different kind of a treatment, but they never want to hear anything about it. I think it's because they don't want to be responsible for me. I really can't think of another reason why they wouldn't call. I called my son at his office last fall to tell him something funny that had happened. I started the conversation by saying, well, I know you're busy, but I just wanted to call you and hear your voice to, and see if you're okay. He responded, yes, I'm very busy. So I said, well, you know that old piece of property that your dad had bought before he died? He didn't answer. So I went on. You know, he bought it when it was on the outside of the city. Well, he paid $500 for one acre. Well, the real estate agent came by, and he said it's worth $12,000. Isn't that incredible? He said, Mother, you may live for five or ten more years. If you start selling everything you have, there won't be anything left to take care of you. I want to reach through that phone right now and strangle that guy. I respect you. I responded, Honey, I have enough. I'll be fine. Well, his voice was tense. Well, I want you to know that I can't work any harder, and I just can't take care of you. I said, you won't have to. Please don't worry about me. Finally, I said, honey, I just called to hear your voice, and I have. I'm going to hang up now. I can't share any of my joys with my kids. They are ignoring me and my grandchildren, too. They have cars, and I don't see them. There are so many things about me that they don't even know. Don't wait. Don't wait till you feel like it. Make an effort. Work through the feelings. That's what being an adult is all about. I realize we have so many adults today who have never worked through those emotions and they still live on childish emotions. God will heal your emotions. Make your emotions line up with the word of God. And how do you do that? You make yourself do the things that you know is right to do. And do them right away. You make your emotions line up with the word of God by doing what you know is right to do, whether you feel like it or not. Amen? That is truth. It's time to honor our parents. The second way is even if they don't receive it, and I'm going to come to a close here, but even if they don't receive it, you may be thinking, I can hear the door slamming right now when I go to them. I can hear the phone hanging up with a big loud click. They won't receive it. I'm telling you, they will. Remember the story of the prodigal son? What happened to the prodigal son? Remember, he says, you know, I'm going to live like an animal, and he did. He lived like an animal. He took his father's inheritance before it was time. Didn't want anything to do with his father. Went out and lived like a pig. And next thing you know, he's eating with the pigs. And, and when all of his money is spent, all of his friends are gone, all of a sudden he realized and came to his senses, man, my servants are eating better than I am at my dad's house. I'm going to go back to my dad. And I know, listen to this, I know he won't take me back. I know it. But maybe I could be a servant. Maybe I could work in the barn for him. But on his way back, as he was thinking those very thoughts, the Bible says that his dad was on the edge of the property looking for him. And when he saw him, he ran to him, he hugged him, and he kissed him, and he honored him, and he brought him back into the, the fullness of the family and everything about him. Everything that he originally had, he brought him back to the fullness of, of his sonship. Hallelujah. You know what? Your parents are wanting to take you back. They may put up a front like King David did, but I want you to know they long for you. They long for us all the time. Even when you think they won't receive it, they will receive it. It says Luke 15, 20 says this. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. You'll be surprised for the response you get. Give it a try. Give it a try. Besides, we don't do it just for the response, do we? We do it to be obedient to God. That's where the blessing comes from, amen? And the third thing is this. It's time to honor our parents even if they have been abusive. Even if they have been abusive. You know, and I, I gotta be honest with you. In studying this and reading some of these things and thinking about this, 
I realize today that in America and in this world, there's so much abuse, be it physical, be it emotional, be it sexual. There's so much abuse in the family today like never, ever before. And I'm thinking, man, there's going to be people out there. I, I, I don't know the situations they're in. But you know what? God knows the situation that each and every one of us is in. He knows it. He's there with us. And he will help you through this. Just trust him and be obedient to his word. Here's what we need to do. Number one, a lot of us are focusing on the pain. If you focus on the pain, you know what, that, what does that do? That perpetuates the pain. It never stops. Today, if your parents hurt you, and you, that's all you think about every time you see them, and, you, and your mind immediately goes to that pain or that situation or that circumstance, you will never, ever, ever get over that, and you'll never be healed. You have to say, I got to stop that. I got to give it to God. Find something good to focus on. That promotes healing and reconciliation. Find something good about your parents. I can't think of anything good. That's a lie. You can. Look at the sacrifices they did for you when you was a child. You can. Honoring parents does not mean exposing yourself to further pain, but it is a step of obedience with a promise that it will go well and you will live a long life. Amen? Honoring parents helps break the chains of bitterness and unforgiveness. Hallelujah. You have to. Uh, honor your parents. Find a way. And what's one way you could do that? One of the ways you could do that is to write a tribute to them. You know? If you can't go to them and talk to them on the phone, then just write them a tribute. Write out all the things. And don't be mushy gushy and put things in there. Be honest. But don't focus on the thing that you're going to correct your parents. Don't use the letter as a, a, something to beat your parents down or correct them. Don't do that. You use this letter as a tribute. To say, I want to say thank you, mom and dad, for the way you raised me, for the sacrifices that you made. I know that you love me. Boy, just a parent to hear that the kid knows that they're loved, that makes a parent feel like, oh, I'm finally heard. I'm finally heard. Hallelujah. Acknowledge all the good that they've done for you. Tell them how thankful you are that you are their son or their daughter. Expose, express your love to them. Express it. Recognize their sacrifices on your behalf. Let the healing start with you. Amen? Let the healing start with you. Be honest. Be positive. The Bible says whatever is good and pure and holy and wholesome, think on these things. Think on those things with your parents as well. Amen? And be quick about it. Don't wait till it's all over with. Jimmy, if I can have you come play the guitar here. Don't wait. Amen? You know, there's a story, and you guys know hundreds of stories where people said, you know what? Um, I wanted to go to my mom, but I was just so busy. I never went to her, never went to her, and put it off, put it off. And next thing you know, you know, let's, let's, let's have a good day with mom. And then next thing you know, mom or dad dies. You don't have that chance again. Don't wait to that. Well, I, I don't know how many stories I even heard where people said, you know, finally at the very end there when mom was sick or dad was sick, we went to them and we helped take care of them. And it might have been a very short time, but then they had their last picture together and then they died. You know what? Don't wait to that. God wants to heal families now. And the thing is, the only way that your children can see families healed is by the way you heal them as well. So trust God. Will you please bow your heads? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. It is true whether we want, whether our feelings agree with it or not. Amen? I just, emotions, get out of the way. I thank you, God, for our emotions. And I command that our emotions would line up with the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And God says that he created us as a family unit and that our hearts are connected and that our parents long for us and that we long for our parents. We see the story in David in Absalom. And that story is very true for us today. Oh, Pastor Terry, you don't know the circumstances. It's different. I don't care. Truth transcends time. Truth transcends your emotions. It is true. Trust God. And God says when you honor parents, you're honoring me, number one. But when you honor your parents, it will go well with you. And you will live long on the earth. And the family unit will be stronger and stronger. And your family can be changed. Honor your parents. If they've been deceased, honor them in front of your children. See, I want to tell you something about my mom and dad that I appreciate and that I love and how they were so wise in this. They were good parents. They loved me. Honor your parents from your kids today if your parents are gone. Reach out. If you've been hurt, Reach out. Call to them. Keep your distance. You know, don't put yourself in harm's way. 
but reach out and call to them and make the connection. Make it start now. You'd be surprised. They're waiting. They want to hear from you. This is the only commandment with a promise. So, Lord, we thank you for that promise. And I pray today that we would live in that promise. That promise will be fulfilled in our hearts and our lives and in this church in Jesus' name. And, Lord, those around us whose families are all broken up and they just learn to accept it, learn to live with the pain, I pray, God, that we can come in and give them truth. Says, you know what? God can heal your family. He can heal your family. There's hope for you. It's through forgiveness. It's through blessings. It's through honoring your parents. All these things could lead to your family being whole. In Jesus' mighty name. I hope you enjoyed Pastor Terry's message today. If you would like to have more information concerning our church, you can go to www.faithoutreach.cc. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless.